When you really want to capture a user's attention on your web page, you want something eye-catching, like these animated icons on the Stripe website, which is exactly what you're going to be learning today using just one Tailwind class. You are going to be learning how to animate four different icons in four different ways. But we're going to start from the base template, which you can find on the pinned comment. So let's first check out the default animations Tailwind gives us. So for this light bulb, let's check out what, what animations we have. We have a spinning animation, a ping that would go great with some notification, a pulsing one, and a bouncing one. I think the pulse goes really well with this as it gives the effect of a light bulb turning on and off. For the cog wheel, I feel like the animate spin fits it super well, but it's way too fast. So we need to find some way how we can customize these animations a little bit. For this, we need to go into a Tailwind config. So in our team, we want to extend animation and we want to give it the name of the animation we want to modify. So in this case, spin. And uh, each of the animations are going to take four values. First one is going to be the name of the keyframes. In this case, it's going to be spin. The second one is going to be length of the animation, which is one second. The next one is going to be the timing function. And the last one is going to be the amount of cycles. So these are the default values for the spin animation. Now, if we want the animation to move slower, what we need to do is increase its length. So instead of one second, let's change it to six. Now, as you can see, we really slowed it down a lot and it's looking quite well. Now for the megaphone, I want to create kind of um, like wiggle animation. We don't have that by default, but thankfully the amazing documentation has an example how to create custom animations and they have an example of how to create a wiggle animation. What a coincidence. So I can just copy and paste the keyframes from here into a config and also the animation right here. And then I'm going to add the class to the megaphone. So animate wiggle. Okay, we can see the megaphone wiggling, but there's quite little movement. I would want it to move a little bit more. So before we can modify that, we need to understand how these keyframes work. So at 0% and 100%, which is the start and the end of the animation, we are going to rotate it three degrees counterclockwise. And at 50%, which is the halfway point, we are going to rotate it 3% clockwise. Uh, to demonstrate how it would look like, I can change this to, let's say, 90 degrees, which is a lot. So you can see a big difference on how the keyframes change the animation. All right, now that's quite excessive, but I think it drives the point home on how the keyframes work. So instead of doing something crazy like 90 degrees, let's do something more reasonable like six and also minus six for the zero and 1% keyframes. All right, that's more reasonable and it's looking quite well now. For the heartbeat, I want to create, well, a heart beating animation. We don't have any examples on that, so we have to create it from scratch. But I think it will be a good exercise for you, because you will know the process on how you can create completely custom animations. So I will start by giving it a class animate beat. Of course, this animation doesn't exist yet, so nothing is happening. So let's go to our config. I'm going to copy and paste the wiggle animation and rename it to beat. And also I want to rename the keyframes to beat. And I'm going to duplicate the wiggle keyframes and rename them to beat. Now the keyframes name and the animation name doesn't have to be the same thing at all. You can name them anything. So this can be X and X 
and it would work just fine. But I think it's a good idea to keep them the same name so you know that they fit together. As the page refreshed, we can see that the heart is now wiggling, but we want to create a beat animation, not a wiggle. So instead of rotating it, we want to change its size. And we can do this by instead of calling rotate, we can do scale. We want it to start and end at scale 1, which means its original size. And at 50% mark, we want its scale to be 1.5, meaning 50% larger. Let's see how that looks like. All right, now we have some animation going on, but it's not what I want. So we need to modify it quite a bit. When I think of a heartbeat animation, I want the beginning to be very fast and then gradually returning its original position. Now the speed is very constant. This is partly due to our transition function, which is ease in out. What we want for this is ease out. All right, the difference is very subtle. So I'm going to show them side by side on the screen so you can see how they differ from each other. But we can do something better here. I think the scaling is too much. So let's drop it down to 1.2 and see how it looks like. Okay, 1.2 looks a lot better, but the beginning of the animation is still not as fast as I would like. Now we could do something like customize the transition function, but I think the easier way is to just change the keyframe to happen earlier. So instead of having the 1.2 scale at 50% mark, we can do something like 25%. So it happens a lot earlier. Okay, now the page refreshed and we can see the heartbeat looks quite realistic to me. Something that I want it to look like from the start. Now remember, these animations are applied using the classes. So you can just copy and paste this class to anywhere you want on the page and it will animate that element. So you can go as crazy as you want with this. And the possibilities are truly endless. You can even like, I don't know, <laughs> do something like this, really. And I know at the beginning, Tailwind CSS can be quite confusing. That's why I created a playlist of all my Tailwind CSS tutorials, just like this one. So you can keep learning efficiently. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter at the Austin Shelby, where I post a lot of small code snippets and designs I'm working on. So you can steal them before I post them on YouTube. Thank you for watching again. And I hope you will use these animations in your web pages soon.